In this lesson, we're going to look at the chain rule and we're going to rewrite the power rule using the chain rule and call it the general power rule. Let's take a look at two questions and without knowing the chain rule, we'll have to find the derivative in some other way. So for our first question, I have f of x is equal to x squared minus one quantity squared. Well, I don't know the chain rule, so the only way that I can tackle this question right now is to go ahead and FOIL this out because I have x squared minus one twice. So that would give me x to the fourth minus x squared minus x squared, so that's minus two x squared, and then minus one times minus one is plus one. So my derivative now is the derivative of four x, I'm sorry, x to the fourth, which is four x cubed using the power rule, and then minus two times the derivative of x squared is minus two times two x, which is minus four x. And then the plus one, the derivative is zero. So I'm going to just rewrite this by factoring out the four x, and that gives me four x times x squared minus one. And I'm gonna leave it just like that. Now, if I looked at the second question, notice this is to the 21st power. So without knowing the chain rule, I would have to FOIL this out, x squared minus one times x squared minus one times x squared minus one times x squared minus one, 21 times. So that by itself would take a really long time and then I would have to take the derivative of that result. So let's talk about the chain rule because the chain rule can save us from having to do that. So you will find that you love the chain rule because the chain rule is very easy to apply. And the very most important part is that you're able to understand that we are taking the derivative of a composite function and therefore we need the derivative of the original function and the derivative of the composite function. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say y is equal to f of u. So that's some function where u is another function. So it's a function within a function. Then to find the derivative of that composite function, I'm going to take f prime of g of x. So I'm going to take the derivative of the, of the original function and then the derivative of the composite function. So here's what I mean by that. And I'm going to use, instead of g and g prime of x, I'm going to say f prime of u times u prime. So in this first question, what we're going to do is we're going to write what u is. So u is going to be the part of the function that we can sort of separate out. I can say u is x squared minus one, and u prime is the derivative of that, so that's just two x. So from here, think about f of u being written as u squared, because this is u. So f of u is u squared. So f prime of u says take two u to the first and then also times u prime. So now f prime of x means I'm just going to plug the u's back in. So two times u, x squared minus one to the first times u prime, which is two x. And if I rewrite that, I get four x times x squared minus one. And if you'll notice, that's the same solution I got before when I foiled it out. So it is the same solution. Let's take a look at g of x. g of x we didn't even try without using the chain rule because we knew it would take far too long. But if I think about u as, again, the part inside the parentheses, x squared minus one, then u prime is the derivative of x squared minus one, which is two x minus zero, or just two x. The chain rule says, okay, g of u is now u to the 21st. So if I found u to the 21st, I found the derivative, you would tell me that's 21 u to the 20th. And then you would say, okay, also take it times u prime because that's the derivative of what's inside. So g prime of x is 21 
u was x squared minus 1, that's to the 20th power, and I'm multiplying that by 2x. So my solution is 42x times x squared minus 1 to the 20th. So we were able to find that derivative fairly quickly using the chain rule. So let's just do a little practice of finding what is u and what's f of u. So if I have y equals 2 over x cubed minus 3, it makes sense that u would be this function down here. So u is going to be x cubed minus 3. And f of u then would be rewriting this in terms of u. So this is y is equal to 2 and then u to the negative 1 because all of this is in the denominator. So that's how I would rewrite it. So they're not asking me to find the derivatives. We're just finding u and f of u. For the next one, again, this function inside the function would be u, 4x squared minus 7, which means I could rewrite this as f of u is equal to u to the 1 half because this is the square root of that function. Next, I've got sine of 4x, so u would be 4x, and g of u would be sine of u. And again, why are we doing this? Because it's very easy when you're finding the derivative of sine of 4x to say, oh, sure, the answer is cosine of 4x. But you can't do that because you also have to take into the take account that 4x has a derivative of 4. And so if I were actually finding the derivative of sine of 4x, g prime of x would be 4 times the cosine of 4x. And we'll do some practice in a little bit. Lastly, this function, cosine squared x, is actually cosine of x quantity squared. So u, in this case, would be cosine of x, and h of u would be simply u squared. Before we do more practice, let's look at the general power rule. So before, we said the power rule was that if I was taking the derivative of x to the n, it was n times x to the n minus 1. And the general power rule includes all of that, except that it says if this function right here, so if it's not just x, but it's some u to the x, so if it's some function, also take it times the derivative of that function. So I'm not going to write this using u and f of u in this case. I'm just going to use the power rule. And the power rule, the general power rule says y prime is 6 times this entire function to the fifth power, but also take it times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of 7x to the fourth minus 3x is 28x to the third minus 3. And the good news is I can leave it just like that. I do not have to distribute that 6 into these two values. I can leave my solution just like this. So these are the same four functions that we practiced a little bit ago. I want you to actually find the derivatives now that we have practiced finding u and f of u. And it's up to you whether or not you actually use the u and f of u method. Um, it might be helpful or you might totally understand it and not need that method. So when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for my first question, again, if I'm using that u and f of u method, u would have been x cubed minus 3, u prime would be 3x squared, and f of u would be 2 times u to the negative 1, which means f prime of u would be negative 2 u to the negative 2 times u prime. So f prime of x, or y prime, would be negative 2 u to the negative 2, so that's x cubed minus 3 to squared, 
and then u prime is 3x squared, so then that's times 3x squared. So really, the numerator would just be negative 6x squared. So that's how we can use the chain rule in this case. Now, what's the other way we could have done this? We could have used the quotient rule, and that would have given us the exact same solution. Let's look at our second question. Again, using the chain rule, and this time I'm not going to rewrite it as u and u prime. That should have been a prime on there, by the way. Here I'm just going to say, if I'm finding the derivative, this is essentially 4x squared minus 7 to the 1 half. So what's f prime of x? It says use the power rule, 1 half, 4x squared minus 7 to the negative 1 half. And then because this has a derivative, the function inside has a derivative, multiply by that derivative, which would be 8x. And then clean it up. So I would have 1 half times 8x, which would be 4x. And in the denominator, I would have 4x squared minus 7 to the 1 half. So that would be my derivative. Again, you can take the time to write it as u and u prime and f of u and f prime of u and then back to f of x. The more you do this, the easier this will become and you won't need those extra steps. So here, if I'm finding g prime of x, we've already talked about this one, but if you did use u, this would be u is 4x, u prime is 4, f of u would be sine of u, which means f prime or g prime or whatever of, let's do g, just so we don't confuse anyone. So g prime of u would have to be the derivative of sine, which is cosine of u, but then times u prime, because that's what the chain rule says to do, is make sure if there is a derivative, use it. So cosine of u would be cosine of 4x, but u prime is 4, so I'm going to multiply that by 4. So this is my solution. Now again, did I need to use u and u prime? Not if I'm familiar with the chain rule. I can just say, what's the derivative of sine of 4x? It's cosine of 4x. What's the derivative of 4x? It's 4. Same thing here. Remember, this is actually h of x. Oh, I should switch colors. h of x is equal to cosine squared. I'm sorry, cosine of x squared. So what is h prime of x? h prime of x says use the power rule. 2 times cosine of x to the first power, but now cosine of x has a derivative of negative sine of x. So my solution is negative 2 cosine of x sine of x. And yes, there is a special trig identity that we can use to rewrite that, but I'm going to leave it just like that to avoid confusion. Up next, we're just going to do a lot of differentiation practice and take a look at some other strategies that might be helpful.